Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. We're a small yarn shop just outside of Boston and we're on the train line so people if you're in Boston or visiting Boston you can come out here on the commuter rail or you could take an Uber. Either one but do come visit if you're in town. We also have an online shop and that you can get to at blacksheepknitting.com. We I think just about all the yarns we have in the shop are online. So um, it's a good way if you don't live near a yarn shop, come and visit our online store. We offer um, pretty quick shipping, unless something's by mistake out of, out of um, stock. We try to keep the website pretty updated, but occasionally our inventory is off. It's, it's rare, it's not, it's not that often, but sometimes we then have to call the um, the yarn company and get it shipped to us then to ship it to you. Um, I came across something in my knitting. I have a lot of yarn books and um, most of which I don't knit out of because I try to knit patterns from Ravelry for the shop um, so that um, people can get them if they come out of a book. Um, then somebody has to buy the book and books are expensive. For me they're just fun. I get ideas from them and occasionally I'll knit something out of them. This book that I found in my library is not a um, book of patterns. It's called For the Love of Knitting. And I think I found it not used, but way on sale. I think I paid $8 for it. And it was published in, um, hmm. Um, it was published, I should have looked this up ahead of time, in 2004. So anyway, I just found some of the pictures in here. There's a lot of writing in it and that's kind of fun, but I'm not going to read them. I wanted to show you some of the patterns and notice the prices on some of these. Um, but here's one from doesn't say when, but this was 25 cents for this pattern. I just find these, these pictures really charming. And there are lots of, I'm sure you could probably find this in a library if you were interested in reading, because there's a lot of, there's stuff from Elizabeth Zimmerman. Those of you may know her, she was a famous knitter and her daughter Meg Swanson has sort of carried on her tradition. but. Elizabeth Zimmerman wrote a bunch of books on knitting. Um, here's one from Good Housekeeping. Look at this little, lovely little girl knitting. And this one I thought was kind of fun. They call them Scandinavian snow sets or snow time sweaters. Look at these. And people are still knitting these, I think. I don't think they've, maybe the, the patterns have changed a little bit. I think the shapes of them have probably changed over the years. This one, I love this woman. This is from 1921. Look at her. I love the hat. Um, let's see. Oh, this I thought was really sweet. These are three sisters knitting, sitting on a porch knitting. Look at the overalls. Don't know when this is from. But I could guess the 20s or 30s. I'm guessing, judging by the shoes. And these ladies, these remind me of my grandma. But look at the shoes. I think she always wore those shoes. Knitting's been around for a long time. I think somewhere in here there's a picture of Eleanor Roosevelt knitting. But this one I thought was really, they're two really fun pictures. These two sort of, they're three dour looking women all dressed in black. And then look over on this page, knitted teacups. 
Obviously, you couldn't put tea in those, but kind of fun. And then, but I just get a kick out of these old pictures. This one, look at these. And this is some yarn. Um, I'm wondering if any of these yarn companies are around. Bernat might be one that was around a long time ago. Oh, and this one I thought these are two sculptures. There's about, they're about eight inches tall, called Prime of Life by an artist named Karen Cyril. Look at those little lovelies. And so then these last ones are just knitting for the war, knit for defense. I'm guessing that's World War II. This pattern was 10 cents. And then I think there are a few more. Here's some little boys knitting. I think socks for the war and some women who've, oh, and here's a thing for the newly drafted body, boy, I mean, there are things you could knit. So here are some little boys knitting. We have a picture like this in the shop. And then knits for the boy, the newly drafted boy. So you could knit your son or husband things. And then here's a whole group of kids. This is knitting for the Red Cross. Look at this whole class of kids knitting. And here's one. This is from 1941. There was, I had one more that's just like calling people to knit for the war effort. And I must have. Oh, here it is. I love this one. Our boys need socks. Knit your bit. Isn't that great? Those were the days. Well, we knit for the troops in, in uh, Ukraine. And I know a lot of people knit, the local temple often knits helmets for Israeli soldiers to go under the, I mean, not helmets, but um, hats. Yeah, I don't know, they come around with the neck and I'm forgetting the name, but to go under their helmets. Uh, we have some new yarn in the shop from Earth Yarns. And it's a yarn called um, Spiral Grain. Yes. And they are it's a little bit similar to um, Dyed in the Wool Spin Cycle, but the, the colors are quite subtle in a way, but they do stripe and they are, um, um, what is the word? They're double stranded with two colors and I can't think of the word, but anyway, you'll see. Um, I wanted to show you the colorways. This one's called Jacaranda, beautiful blue. This one is Sugar Pine. I kind of like that, that just came, we got all these and then this just came yesterday. Um, we have Juniper, that's a really pretty one. And by the way, this yarn is um, it's 198 yards and you're using a size two to four, so that's about a fingering weight. Sport to fingering, actually, ex pardon me. They're calling it a sport. I think it's a, it's sport to fingering. There we go, got it. And the yarn itself, is 
machine wash with cold water dry flat and it's 100% superwash extra fine merino. This colorway is weeping willow. Anyway, my point was that it's super, super soft. You would love to knit with. This one's called Hickory. So you can use this in place if you're knitting a fingering weight sweater. You could use this, or if you're using a sport, doing a sport weight, like a 24 stitches over four inches, you could, uh, you could also use this. This is Magnolia. Really pretty colors. They're, they're kind of summery, springy a little bit. And this one's called Elm. So we have some samples knit in this. And this is a hat. It's very similar to we had shown the Musselboro hat by Isolde Teague. But this one's called Dublo. D-U-B-B-L-O. And this is in the Weeping Willow and Jacaranda. So it's this, but it's double just like the, um, and it's reversible. So you can wear it like that. You can wear it like this, and you can see the color change is subtle. And it has some beautiful decreases at the top. I love those sort of spiral ones. Then the other side is Weeping Willow. You can wear it like that, or you can turn up the brim and wear it like this. That's my favorite way to wear it. And this is just, I'm not sure how they do this, but anyway, it's knit in the round in um, one piece with some kind of braid going on in here, or I'd have to look at the pattern. I'm not, I'm not gonna swear to what it is, but that's how it's done, just like the muscle burrow. So you really get four hats in one, four different ways to wear it. And as I said again, it is really, really soft. The other thing we got, this is a crocheted vest. This would be worth learning crochet to make this little vest. And this is called the Jepkin Vest. And it's in the Spiral Grain Sport um, Blue Spruce. This is a size two. But isn't that adorable? And again, this is just deliciously soft. This is the pattern, and it was de designed for earth yarns. So I suppose you could probably knock this off and knit it, but I think it's an easy crochet. I think it's just um, looks to me like a bunch of double crochets. I haven't looked, but anyhow. I think it's really darling and would look great on some little guy. So we finally got the yarn for the um, Arrows Up yarn. And um, we have the yarn now that we got from Trendsetter. So we have kits that we can you can call and order or come into the shop for them. So um, we have copies of the pattern for you. So just let us know. And again, this is like the softest, most delicious yarn you'll ever, ever knit with. So some of you have seen this before, but I finally got their yarn. And um, the skeins might look different to you, but it is, I assure you, it's the same yarn. It's just the way they're wrapped. So, so some are... This is the same colorway. It just shows the colors are wound in a different order. So anyway, that's in the shop. And then, oops, I left out one of the, um, one of the uh, spiral grain colorways called Blue Spruce, which is gorgeous. I wanted to give you an update on the um, Rebecca Clo, as I'm, I've been calling her Clow. It's not Clow, it's Clo, Rebecca Clo. Um, knit along. Remember that if you buy the yarn for her patterns between now and July 31st, you get 20% off the yarn. You have to buy it, obviously, from us. And um, the 
I think that Robin will be, her goal is to publish a tutorial um, with Giovanna showing some techniques for um, every, Tuesday. every Tuesday for the leaf cardigan, maybe for something else. Um, I'm not sure she just did one on intarsia knitting. So if you missed that, go back and look. On the um, website. Go back and look on our website. The tutorials will be there as well as in an email. Remember that we're meeting on Fridays, 3 to 5. If you want, you don't have to. You don't have to. Just um, all you'll need to do is purchase the yarn from us. And when you finish it, let us know. I think there'll be instructions on how to do that. Some people had some troubles with it. And um, if you want to just email the shop with a picture, you'll be entered to win. And our prizes are gift certificates this time. Um, then I wanted to show you, uh, oh, well, yeah, let me go to this next. I wanted to show you the progress on my, I have two Rebecca Clo patterns going. The other one is at home. It's the Tolsta T. So I have, no, these are Robins. Okay. No, nope, those are yours. No, they're not. I just got red extras. That's I yours. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Robin and I are, I've been on vacation for a few days, so I'm a little bit dippy. So this is my Leith cardigan. So I have done one front side, and I'm on the second. I'm about here on the front. And I am using the um, um, Amano Sammy XL. Now, here's a confusing thing because most people's definition of uh, they're, they're saying they want 20 stitches over 4 inches. So most people's definition is that that's a worsted weight. So I went to my yarn and this says 17, which is not correct, not the correct yarn. So I did a swatch, and I did get, um, I think I got 18 over 4 inches. So I'm off by um, a few stitches per inch, which can add up to be disastrous for you. So what I, I did some calculations, and if you need help with that, we can explain it, or I'll explain it next time. But what I did, I'm working on so this is, these are the colors and the yarn. I'm working on a size 7 needle, but I went down a size in the pattern to account for the bigger gauge that I'm getting. I'm getting more stitches, fewer stitches per inch than I should. So um, as a general rule, if I'm off by a stitch or half a stitch, I just change the size that I'm doing. There's a formula to that. I don't have time to go into that today, but if you want some help, we can do that for you in the store. Um, it's not hard to do. And um, I happen to really love this yarn. You wouldn't want to knit this. Robin did a swatch on a six, and she got gauge, but we decided for a summer sweater that it was a little too tight. Now, if you want a tight knit sweater, go for it. I didn't, I wanted something looser. So you can see mine is looser. What I did do, however, is I have measured, and you can measure this very early on. Remember you have a um, binding that goes on here. As you can see, you're going to be adding this all the way around. So that's maybe an inch and a half. I'm not sure what it is. So you want to include that in your measurement. But if you get knitting this, it's done from the bottom up. I took a tape measure and measured all the way around and included my inch and a half on either side. And I have a perfect size for myself. So um, if you need help with that, we can also help you. So that's a good. Even if you do your gauge, I would do my gauge. You can start knitting it. Um, and again, 
if you're off and you have too few stitches, like I did, I had seven, I had 18 when I should have had 20, um, I just went up one size in the, down one size in the pattern. It's a little, it's confusing, I know, but I w was dying to use this yarn, so I had to do it. Um, so speaking of this yarn, these are my colors. I have um, azalea and this is sorbet and this is phosphorus and this is the orange is 2406. Sorry, folks. And the pink. I need the pink. And the pink is called Cherry Stone. So these are my colors. They're a little crazy, I know. And it's the leaf pattern calls for changing the stripes in, in the middle here. And you change them maybe on the side as well. So the two fronts are different. The size, the colors line up differently as well as the two backs. I think one side of this continues this pattern, but this side changes over here into the back. I, that was not what I wanted to see. And now I'm almost ready to do my sleeves and I'm toying with doing small stripes like with those um, because of course I don't follow rules I like to be creative in my own way so I may do this with um, four row stripes um, on the sleeves just because I think it would be fun so that's the progress so far on my leaf cardigan by the way this knits up on a size seven incredibly fast. I'm about to take these home with me, which I shouldn't. Um, it knits so fast and it's such a pleasure to knit on that um, it, you'll be finished in no time. Wanted to show you my progress. I put this in timeout for a little bit. This is my Johnny or Joni. And pretty much followed the pattern as it was written, with maybe an exception here or there. Um, this has to get some serious blocking, partly because it's lace, and so you want to block out the lace so you really get the lace pattern. Um, the sleeve, the only issue I had with the sleeve was that I knit and I think it was unnecessary. I got carried away, I guess. I knit this distance between the shoulder and the underarm. I think I knit a little bit long. And if you do that, you're gonna have more stitches to pick up than you should. Um, so it's kind of, the pattern is written with short rows here that go from here up to here so if you, um, what I ended up doing was I did the number of short rows for a much larger size because I had more stitches picked up here. I did end up doing some decreases down here at the bottom of the armhole to make the armhole a little smaller. And Robin, do you see a um, measuring tape there? Measuring. Oh, I see. So, Generally, my measurement, I think, from my shoulder to where I want a, um, the armhole to begin is um, about nine inches. So I'm gonna see if I'm, no, I think I'm okay. This is nine. So I think I have corrected it. But what I did, because I knew this was a little bigger, was I did decreases here, and I also did more short rows, so I did on my size, it said to do um, you were first knitting 10 and then you turn. Uh, 
so each time it was like 10. I did where they instructed me to do 10, I did 16. So I made my short rows go down a little bit longer. So it, and it's very simple. It's again, though, if you notice, this is garter. I'm knitting in the round. So garter knit in the round is knit one row, purl one row. It's not knit every row like garter if you're knitting back and forth. It's because if you knit every row, you would get stockinette like this. So it's knit one row, purl one row. But the sleeve is very, very simple. So I'm anxious. I hope to get the sleeve done tonight or tomorrow morning. It'll be ready for blocking and then wearing. So I'm excited about that because I put it away for a while. I had done a different sleeve on it. I had decided I wanted a longer sleeve down to here. So I did it, bound it off, did not like it, just didn't like it. So I'm going with the original design, which I think would be great. So I wanted to show you um, a very cool sweater that Robin is knitting. Some of you may have already done this, but it's called Flax from Tin Can Knits. And it's just a regular, you know, sort of crew neck um, raglan with this design down that goes all the way down the sleeve. So this is um, a garter stitch down the sleeve. But again, because you're in the round, it's knit one row, purl one row. And it's just in between here. It's just a nice design feature. And one of the nice things about this is, or interesting things, is that it does the short row, when you're doing short row shaping, you're adding, in, in a sweater, you're adding extra fabric here so that the sweater sits higher up in the back because you are higher up in the back and you want it a little lower in the front. But normally it gets done up in here, right after the um, shoulders or after your um, band ribbing. But this one does it much further down not sure why. We don't know why. It works. But it works. So they're done down in here. So it's giving you that extra fabric right there. Um, this is knit in a yarn from Noro called Kakagori. And it's a combination of cotton, silk, viscose, and polyamide. It's mostly, it's 50% cotton, but those of you who can't wear wool, this, and if you like a light feel, this is a summer, this could be worn summer, spring, fall, winter. Um, but definitely for those of you who can't wear um, wool. So we have two colorways. This one, I don't know if I have more. You can look on the website, but we do have, this is called Fukuyama. It's a DK weight. We have some other DK weights over there. Um, Robin, do you want to just grab those quickly right behind you? The Noro striped ones. So this is another kind of cool one that you could do. I'll just show you two of these. I think I showed these before, but this would be a really fun. It stripes gorgeous colors since this is Nat Natsumiki. And this again is cotton, silk, and polyamide. Again, so it's a great yarn for those people who have issues with wool. This is a DK weight. These are the colorways. And this is, I'm going to have trouble, Kuwana. This is Egagawa. Edagawa. Look at all the colors. And this one is really fun. Shimoda pinks and turquoise, and then they, it changes inside. This one is Higashini, Higashin. I think that's it. I think this is that's same. the same. Yeah. Is that what it says? Yeah. Anyway, so these are some um, options for you. You can knit this short sleeve or long sleeve, depending on what you like. Um, I think that might be all for today. Um, we have, we are nice and cool in here, so remember, if you're at home sweltering on these summer days, you're welcome in here anytime in the afternoon. We have classes in the morning, so that 
doesn't work for us. But if you want to come, we especially have a lot of fun on Friday afternoons because we have kind of a big group that comes. Um, but you're welcome any other afternoon. We, um, we love to have people here. Uh, it's fun for us, and I'm sure it'd be fun for you. Oh, I wanted to show you one quick thing that I started. This, I think, we showed in, our, um, in one of our last emails, and it's a pattern by Paula Strict, and it's called the Sabai Top Number no. 1. It's a worsted weight, and I decided I needed a black top. And you know how people hate knitting on black. If you have good lighting, this is perfectly fine. Black, fingering weight, n not as much. This is a cotton, and it's easy to knit on, um, and it just has a lovely feel to it. So I'm enjoying this. I just started it, so I'm not very far. Um, but I recommend that as a nice sleeveless summer top. So I think that's it for today. I hope you have a great week of knitting. Remember, you can take I take my knitting on the beach or to the pool with me. I just keep everything in a plastic bag, and I put a towel over my legs if I've greased myself up with... Um, I was at the beach over the weekend, and it was pretty intense sun where I was. And I put on number 50, and I did not get any burn. Well, two little spots I missed here, but pretty much, and we were out pretty much all day in the hot sun, in the pool, and in the ocean. So. Um, we're number 50. It works. So that's all for now, and I'll see you next week. Bye.